very good morning students now in continuity with that of the dissection of the palm what we removed was the flexor retinaculum from here to expose this tendons which lies in the carpal tunnel and this was the median now here okay these are the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis and then deep to it will lie the tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus this was the tendon of the flexor pollicis longus okay this was the superficial branch of the ulnar artery as well as the superficial branch of that um, the ulnar nerve so this is the ulnar artery and that of the ulnar nerve and what we got here was the palmar arch superficial palmar arch the other end of the superficial palmar arch was not having its continuity with that of the superficial radial artery now this is the radial artery we should have sent a branch superficial branch to anastomos to form the superficial palmar arch but no branch was coming we will trace it that the superficial palmar arch on radial side is completed with the help of the other branch deeper branch of that of the radial artery now in the further dissection what we dissected was that the ulnar nerve the superficial branch of this ulnar nerve gives the palmar branches okay these are the palmar uh, digital nerves you can see that the palmar digital nerve going for that of the little and that of the index ring uh, sorry ring finger then there was an another branch which was going on to the lateral side just a minute yes this branch it is going to supply to the medial side of the little finger and this thus one and a half uh, digits medial digits are supplied by the superficial hmm, uh, ulnar nerve then you can see here from the superficial palmar arch okay which is here uh, this three uh, common palmar digital arteries are given these are the three common palmar digital artery which at the wave space are dividing into the proper digital arteries similarly this nerve from the median nerve they are also dividing into the digital artery thus three and a half finger on the radial side or the lateral side are supplied by these median nerve branches okay these branches which going to the this three and a half lateral three and a half branches what i am going to do is that i will remove this nerves digital nerves superficial palmar arch okay and then we will go to the deeper where we will dissect this tendons going to the digits one of this i have already dissected deep to the flexor uh, fibrous flexor sheath of the digits okay this is the tendon of the palmaris i am mean, say tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus and the splitted tendon of the flexor hmm, Uh, superficial digitorum superficial is yes so i am going to remove this and then we'll show you this the in the carpal tunnel okay after removal what we dissected was that of the ulnar bursa okay this is that ulnar bursa see here where my forcep is going this is that synovial sheath deep to the flexor retinaculum where all these eight tendons they are enclosed in one sim- single synovial sheath if i will cut this synovial sheath or the ulnar bursa we will go into the tendons of this all the tendons can be exposed okay so i will expose these tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus i have already ac- delivered this tendon of the flexor pollicis longus hmm? flexor pollicis longus from the radial bursa okay so i will clean it and this tendon and we will trace these tendons as they are going to digit and then we will dissect the small muscle lumbricals okay lumbricals there i will come after few minutes welcome back students now this is the dissection for the lumbricals mainly and lumbricals we can approach only after cutting the tendons of the flexor digitorum 
uh, superficies. You see this, these are the four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis, which I have cut just above the, uh, I mean to say the flexor before they enter into the flexor retinaculum, okay, deep to the flexor. This is the fourth tendon uh, of the flexor digitorum superficialis. This is the third tendon going to the ring finger. This is the for the middle finger and this tendon is for that of the index finger. So I will just put these four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis and here you can see that as it approaches to the metacarpophalangeal joint, this tendon will split into two as you are seeing, two slips and deep to these two slips then the tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus is inserting, I mean say it is passing through it. Now these two slips of the flexor digitorum superficialis will again unite and will split again to get insertion onto the sides of the middle phalanx. This will be the behavior of the flexor digitorum superficialis in all the four fingers, that is ring finger, middle, I mean say index finger, middle finger, ring finger and little finger. <coughs> so what we did here that we have now just kept this flexor digitorum superficialis tendons, okay, <coughs> distally we have reflected that. Now here you have seen that I have removed the common that is ulnar bursa, the sinovel sheath in which all these eight tendons were embedded. Now this is the tendon number one, <coughs> I mean say the fourth tendon, tendon one of the flexor digitorum profundus is here, see this, this is the first tendon, flexor digitorum, then this is the tendon for the middle finger of the flexor this is the tendon for the index finger, I mean say ring finger, and this is the tendon for the little finger. So these four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus are seen. If you see the origin of the lumbricals muscle, the first lumbrical is towards the thumb side, okay? And this is the first lumbrical, this is the second lumbrical, this muscle, this is the third lumbrical, and this is the fourth lumbrical. So they are, they are numbered from lateral to that of the medial side. The first two lumbrical here, they are taking origin from the lateral side of the tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus. See this tendon? And this is the lateral side from where? This muscle, first and second lumbricals, they are unipinnate. They will form a thin cylindrical tendon here and then will cross the metacarpophalangeal joint from that of the hmm, lateral side. <coughs> Excuse me. And these two tendon, lateral two muscles, they will gain their insertion onto the hmm, extensor expansion, okay? Extensor digitorum expansion onto the dorsal aspect of the metacarpophalangeal joint. The other two lumbrical, that is lumbrical number three and the lumbrical four, they take origin from the sides of the tendon of the middle finger, number three takes origin, and from the side of that of the ring finger. See this, this is for middle finger tendon, and this is for ring, and this muscle is taking origin from both the adjacent tendon, and that's why it is bipinnate in nature, and the tendon will go also onto the lateral side of metacarpophalangeal joint here and will insert onto the expansion, okay, the dorsal digital expansion, okay, extensor expansion rather to say. And this is the fourth lumbrical which is also taking origin from the adjacent site of the tendon flexor digitorum profundus of the ring finger and that of the little finger and this is also going and inserting into the dorsal digital expansion. Now these two lateral muscles, lumbricals, will be supplied by the median nerve. Here was the median nerve which we have seen. Yes, this median nerve is here. 
this will supply to these two lumbricals while the lateral to, I mean so the medial two lumbricals that means lumbricals 3 and 4 which is the bipinnate it will gain its in nerve supply from the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. If you see the action since it is inserting onto the dorsal aspect lumbricals they will flex the metacarpophalangeal joint but extend the interphalangeal joint uh, as the attachment of the extensor expansion is right up to onto the dorsal aspect up to the terminal onto the terminal phalanx so it will extend all the interphalangeal joint but flex the metacarpo that means this will be the action okay this is the action this is the flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint but extension at the interphalangeal joint will be there okay so this is about lumbricals origin and then i for a deep structure i will have to cut this tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus all four tendons okay and then we'll have to go to the deeper dissection where we will dissect the adductor policies okay adductor policies